did it again, guys. We only filled up half of the back seat. <laughs> so yeah, we are on our way back home from Utah to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're gonna stop at some thrift stores along the way here in Salt Lake City. Um, we're gonna hit Sabres, you said, right? Sabres, DI. DI. The Southern DIs, ones that we don't usually go to. The ones we didn't go to often when we lived up here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna hit some thrift stores. You'll see a little bit of scenery on the way home. And then we'll be back on our regular schedule which we are excited about. We've been traveling off and on Over for two almost months. two months, more than two months at this point. Yeah. Um, and this is finally back to the regular schedule so where we go to Utah like once a month. We'll probably go down to LA like every other week, but for one day. And then uh, on to whenever, I guess the next big trip will be whenever we do another trash to cash thing, which will happen in the near future, I'm sure. So uh, we're looking forward to it guys. So stay tuned and let's have a good time. So we're not quite at the thrift stores and I'm looking at my YouTube comments and our video on Saturday where I said, if you find these items, you can quit your job. Somebody commented that it was clickbait because I didn't see any super valuable items, just a bunch of 25 and below items, which is a good point. He's right, and I did that very intentionally. Sure, it's a little hyperbolic, the title. You have to have a little bit of uh, excessive you know, titling to get people interested in your videos, but it is true. If you find those kinds of items that we the found, bread items. the bread and butter, butter items, you can quit your job because that's the reality of reselling, guys. Most resellers' point of sale is usually about 20 to 50 bucks exactly. per item. That's the kind of stuff that if you can find it consistently and you go out many different places and find that you can make a full-time living off of it. Of course, you're gonna find big things, yeah. but they're unpredictable and it's unreliable and it's not something you can count on and, and you need you something you can count on. that every day, 500 yeah. or 700 Exactly, they're item. great. They make your months amazing sometimes. Yeah. They can make a couple months at times, but if you wanna make a consistent living doing this, you gotta know what item's worth 15, what item's worth 20, what item's worth 50, and what item's worth 100. Yeah. That's the stuff that you're going to find at garage sales and thrift stores easily, and estate yeah. sales easily and consistently. So that's a good point that they brought that up. And I understood when I made that title that people would assume that it was a high to high dollar item. And of course, I'm going to mention high dollar items when I get them. They're exciting. But yeah. realistically, to make a full-time living doing this, you have to know and become an expert on those bread and butter items because that's the reality of reselling. I wanna add one more thing too before we get to these thrift stores. I think that's part of why having a daily thrifting and reselling channel is important. You get to see what it's like every single day and a lot of those days aren't very good. There's days we don't find much and that is oh, no. the reality of doing this full-time. There's gonna be days that just aren't that great. <laughs> yeah. Some days aren't, but some days are really good. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna see that kind of in real time, the days when we, we have amazing finds and the days where we don't find much of all or of anything, but we you know learn some lessons and hopefully can show you some stuff that we've sold recently. There are some days that you can find those $100 ticket items, but that's rare and far in, you know, that's exactly. not happening every day. We should be able on a good day or a normal day to maybe find a hundred plus dollars worth of items. At least. But it's through various, various different individual items. So that's the life, a daily life of a reseller. And I hope that, you know, the more and more I think about this channel is what people can get out of this, is this is the day to day. What happens every day for a reseller, good and the bad. We're at a saver somewhere in the Salt Lake City area. I'm not sure if it's Midvale, Draper, Riverton, somewhere around there. I did get to the plushes first before dawn, which means I can look through them before she gets a chance. That Grogu, not cool enough to pick up. This was a nice, high quality cat plush. When dawn came over in a little bit, she looked up the brand. Wasn't quite worth it, but kind of cool. I definitely liked the quality on that. You know, not as many plushes as we're accustomed to. This was a nice big Melissa and Doug pugged plush. Not worth a ton of money either. A fresh cart. Nothing better at a thrift store than a fresh cart of new items. Um, let's see what we have. I'm not seeing much of anything. I do see a pink mug there. And it turns out to be a place I went to, literally this exact place. This is Voodoo Donuts, Universal Studios, Florida. Orlando. Um, I, I went there with NC Picker last month on our Picking Across America adventure. This was $149, and we should be able to get about $10, $15 plus shipping. Going to take a brief glance at the holiday section. This looked fairly decent quality. Wasn't worth quite enough. Uh, I might have been able to make a few dollars, but I just wasn't interested in that enough to pick it up. Snow globes. I've sold a lot of snow globes in the past for decent money. This is a little bit too generic, so I put it back. And then up here, this is a good brand. This is actually like a, 
a tea canister that's empty. So this particularly isn't that great. But Spode is a good Christmas brand and holiday brand to look out for. If you see stuff with that logo on there, you should definitely look it up and see if it's a valuable item. This is both a weird and creepy Santa head thing. Um, just weird. Um, yeah, definitely don't want to get that. This is a cute little mug, uh, Disney on Ice. It's the turtle from Finding Nemo, I believe. Um, didn't have a price on it. I looked it up. It wasn't worth that much money. And this was interesting to me. This is from 2007, the original Iron Man, Iron Monger uh, Slurpee Cups. I thought it was cool. Looked it up. Somebody was asking like eight. It was on bid. Hadn't had a bid yet. So I decided to pass. There wasn't enough upside. Ooh, I see an NFL jersey. You don't see them every day. I knew that was 84. It was uh, Antonio Brown. It's $30. Um, just wasn't worth it for a player who's no longer on the team. I do get a kick out of the variance in the size of hat sections at Savers in particular. There is nothing at this Savers. And we have that one in Vegas that has like 200 hats. That was a nice snapback, but it was just too dirty. I didn't want to deal with cleaning it for the price to $8.49. If it was a couple bucks, I might have bothered. But at that price, I'm just going to stay away. I'm trying to focus a little bit more on shoes because I can seem to find those a little bit more often. So I'm looking through. That was just Dexter. I think that's like a you know, doctor brand, which could have been good. I just didn't bother even looking that up. These are nice Nike skateboarding shoes, and they're asking a bit. $30 is, you know, a good price for them if they can get it, but there's no way I can make, you know, any real money on it at that price. They were in great condition. If you're getting them for yourself, go for it. But these were really weird. I was wondering what the heck these were. They seemed like they were unbranded, so I didn't think they were going to be worth much money. They're worth maybe 30, 40 bucks, but I decided to pass. Weird shoes. This was pretty solid right here, 449. What caught my eye originally was this Captain America figure. Not bad, but behind it there, that's a Jake the Snake elite figure. Now you can see he bends at the waist. That's a little bit better quality action figure, and that can go anywhere between about 10 to $20 plus shipping by itself. This is kind of the ideal toy bag that you're looking for when you're out looking at toys this has an elite jake the snake roberts that's why i bought the bag it was four was it 449 that's going to be like 10 to 15 plus shipping but there's also other toys that have some value this captain america this pokemon a couple other little toys so that's like another 10 or 15 dollars in toys on top so we should triple quadruple maybe even more on this at the di and american fork you ready don oh i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> don't feel the excitement of course you already know like usual, I had one victory today, but as usual, Don beat me to the plushes. But the cool thing about the DI and Utah in general is there are a ton of plushes. Look how many there are to go through, and the prices are good, a dollar to like $3. Occasionally, there's one that's super, super expensive, but for the most part, these are super affordable, and Dawn loves to dig through these. I do as well, but she has more patience than I do. She's looking up stuff to see if she can find this bear. Ultimately, couldn't find much of anything on that bear, so we didn't end up getting it. So this is a cool Los Angeles of Anaheim, or whatever they're called now, Angels, a uh, rally monkey plush. Um, we would definitely have picked it up if it didn't have that big hole in it. Look out for those. They can be decent money. I do want to take a second to shout out whoever organized these DVDs. This is epic. This is, this is intense. They brought out a fresh cart of shoes. So I'm definitely going to check this out. You know, maybe I'll find some good Nikes. Maybe I'll find some good basketball shoes. That's typically what I'm looking for. I don't have a great, great wide knowledge of shoes. I do know like On Cloud. I know Allbirds. I know some basic running brands and stuff like that. But Nikes are the things I'm looking for or just high quality basketball shoes. I turned this corner and I found an amazing pair. Check this out. These are Nike Hyperdunk hoverboard shoes. They're in really good condition, except inside they had a little bit of a mess, but these are just in great condition overall on the outside. $35 though. When I tell you I sat here for five minutes debating whether I wanted to spend $35 on these shoes or not, um, I really did. I really wanted them. 35 was a lot. I'm not super comfortable with high-end shoes yet. There was a little bit of cleaning to do. I ultimately decided to leave them and pass. I actually came back a little later and they were gone. I might have changed my mind. $35 is you know, the most amount of money in the world. Also, another issue with those is the prices were everywhere from like 50 to 120, 58 to 120. I just couldn't quite get my 
head around it to buy it. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, a moon pillow was kind of cool, three dollars. Goes for like maybe twelve, fifteen shipped. I decided to pass, but I, I mean, I, I could have made a few dollars on that, but I, I just didn't get it. This is cool, brand new with the tag, semi vintage, kind of two thousand six, seven, eight. Joe Germain, Utah Blaze um, jersey. He used to play for Ohio State back in the day. That's cool. I should be able to get, I think, thirty to fifty on that. We are in Provo at the DI. I have not been at this DI years. in years and years. And years. Another massive plush section. If you're in Utah, definitely go to the DI if you're into plushes. There are so many here. Didn't find much of anything. I recognize this. I see it all the time in Utah. Winter Olympics 2002 mascot plush. And I want to note, not worth a lot. The 2002 Olympic stuff just isn't that good in general. So we didn't find anything at that good, at the DI, where are we? The DI. So I was waiting for you um, up front because I was done. I was clocked out because we were having no luck and this guy was in the case and he pulled out a, a DVD set Ninja Turtles like in the in the van worth like 70 bucks for five dollars so I don't know I guess I could have got to that section first he was there when I had gotten to that section I believe so um, I should have checked collectibles first that's what it's like when you go thrifting though you pick a section and sometimes it's the wrong section and then you see somebody walking by with the one item you would have got from the whole thrift store so it happens, that's what I'm gonna tell myself. It's not my fault, it's karma's fault. 